kind of shocking. It says that this sort of elementary thing that if you've played with mappings of the sphere to the plane, you've observed for these is actually inescapable by essentially topological reasons. And that's surprising. <laughs> now, move on here. Oh, corollary. So here's a corollary to this one, which I think is enjoyable. At any given instant of time, there are two antipodal points on the surface of the Earth at which the temperature and the wind speed are the same. Continuous. You're not. You're not convinced from a. As a, as a philosophy major, you're not. You find it unconvincing. Right. Yeah, I. I Two. Yeah, but uh, of course, is nature a continuum? Yeah. Uh, Yeah, you see, I, I don't know. I mean, how do you want to define temperature? <laughs> you can ask our physics professors. I mean, we have one. He probably could define it for you. Have you heard of the Harry Ball theorem? I have. Let's see here. That is in, um, that is in fact theorem... Yeah, yeah, that's uh, theorem 9.2. It says the following, every tangent vector field to S2 has a zero. So what that says is if you look at a field of arrows on the sphere, there has to be a place where you have zero. No matter, another way to say it is um, if you were like a, a wolf man, so if your like, face and whole head was entirely covered with hair, somewhere there has to be like a, what is that called? Like a colic or whatever, yeah. like a, a place where the hair is, bunching out from. I'm not, uh, keep in mind, I'm not talking about like a sea urchin. This is a tangent vector field. We're not talking about vectors lying off the sphere. We're talking about a tangent. So like a tangent would be something like, you know, these kinds of, these kinds of ones. So if you think about the ones that sort of wrap around, you know, just sort of horizontal slices to, this, to, the, to the sphere, you think about that as a continuous assignment, and it's a continuous assignment, right? You're not allowed to jump. You, you have to, you have, continuous means that both the length and the direction of the vectors can't jump as you move from point to point. And so that forces you where you come to these sort of points where you've got directions like this way up here, but on the back side you've got one like that, right? And the only way you can continuously go from one directionality to another at a point is if the magnitude shrinks to zero, so the directions are not at odds because that's continuity. So, that, I mean, that's a, that's a heuristic explanation for why the theorem is true. But, yeah, this one I've got pictured has to have zeros at the, uh, basically the north and south poles. But this is theorem 9.2 says that that always happens, any tangent vector. Now, here's what this looks like. From a fiber bundle perspective, it's very interesting. If you look at the tangent bundle to the sphere, like this, all right, it says that you can't find a, so what is a vector field? It's an attachment of a vector at each point over the space, right? So one way to look at that is that you have something called a section S, and down here we've got the projection pi. So the tangent space to S2 is the disjoint union um, P and S2. 
of the tangent space to P at S2. So, I mean, this is the tangent bundle. It's like the collection of all tangent spaces. You can think about them just kind of put together. A vector field is, is really a mapping from your base space into the tangent bundle. All right. And that's, that's you know, so, I mean, whatever that looks like, um, I mean, I guess it could look something like a, some sort of slice in here in this, my silly picture at the moment. Each one of those points being, I, I don't know, my picture's not great. I mean, each one of these points is like saying that that, let's say this vector is attached like that down there or something. I mean, I, my picture's not great. The point is you can't find a section of the tangent bundle to a sphere which is everywhere non-zero. Because to do that would be to comb the hair on the sphere everywhere without a colic. It would be to assign a vector field which is everywhere non-zero and somehow continuously assigned on the sphere. See, the inability for you to put that vector field on the sphere, vector field on the sphere speaks to your inability to find an abstract mapping from the two-sphere to the tangent bundle, the so-called global section. Um, anyway, hey, how did I get off on this? It's all your fault. Oh, yes, I wanted to write the ham sandwich theorem because this one's fun. The ham sandwich theorem it says UVW. What are they? Three bounded connected open subsets. Bounded connected open subsets of R3, right? It says that there is a plane in R3 that divides each, each, of, the, each of the sets into two pieces of equal volume. <laughs> Try to draw a pic. So I believe you, am I drawing the picture right? I'm not sure I'm drawing a picture. I'm, uh, v, bounded W, you <laughs> have two dimensions too. Then there's some plane in R3, right, that you could, how does it go? You can cut through it such that what? That divides each of the sets into two pieces with equal volume. Is it a topological result? Yeah. If they look like this, then the plane is this. What happens when you take the middle one and put it out here? All right, so we have like here, here, and then like over here? Yeah. Now, did it say it had to divide each? Oh, not, this is, the wording is poor here. I, I think what it's saying is, I think what it's saying there is something like. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was struggling. My initial picture is, is my naive reading of the theorem, but that can't be true, right? Right. Oh, my picture's misleading? You like, you like two-dimensional sandwich. It seems more reasonable to you. 
But yes, the, uh, the, the proof is Borsak, Golam, and all the stuff in this section. I wonder if it actually is the way that it's supported then. Because I wasn't thinking that you could cut from the, like the direction that we're not seeing on the board. But I think it actually is that way. You can get an equal amount of an and thread. Oh, so if I, oh, what you're saying is I'm, I'm oh, oh, so I, I it's yeah. not. It really, you, oh, oh, okay. So, so this, it's not a, it's not a transverse. It's not, a, it's not a this kind of section. It's a, this kind of section, where, like, this part is behind the section. Right, like behind. Behind. You know, behind. You know, like, chop like that, and then some is, yeah, okay, yeah. So it, it is what it says. It's yeah. just, I'm not thinking three dimensionally because, see, this is why I should teach calculus three and not two. Although I'm, I'm very happy with my calculus two class right now. They are uh, brighter than the, uh, smarter than the average bear, let's say. It's a good section at the moment. All right. Try to say a couple more things here. So the next section here is on homotopic maps. So he basically extends the discussion of homotopy a little bit more generally. And I think we've already said some of these things in terms of like one day I talked about if we have a continuous map, it induces a homomorphism of the corresponding fundamental groups. So that's in this section. And he also talks about retracts of space, right? So um, he talks about the fact that um, the fundamental, basically here's, here's an example, fundamental group of the constants with zero removed is the integers again. And the reason for that essentially is that if you look at the unit circle, right, and S1, and then you look at the, the punctured complex plane, which I will picture like this, Right? I mean, it's everything. There is a, a retract. Right? What's the retract here? So what does it take for it to be a retract? Continuous, con continuous, and we also need that R of S1 is what? S1, right? Is it stronger that, than that? Does it actually have to fix the points of the subset that it's the retract of? Or is it allowed to move the points of the retracted set? Deformation retract, right. Yeah. So it actually, it, it point-wise fixes this. In other words, R of Z equal to Z for all Z and S1. All right. Anyway, what's this map? It's, it's pretty simple. It's just R of Z is equal to Z over length of Z. All that does is, you know, you take me, take a Z out here, it back into there, that's my R of Z, right? If I take Z in here, that's my R of Z. So it, it, it just, you can see why it's called a retraction, right? It's kind of like you're taking the space and like retracting it 
to that subset. And what are the theorems we have? I believe, what, what's the relation of the fundamental, what, what's the fundamental group? If you have a retraction like this, what, is there some kind of relation between fundamental group of the, of the space and its retraction? A homotopy equivalence, yeah. Right. So I got to think about it. If I feel like I'm, sh if I feel like I should, I may talk more about homotopy equivalence in the way that King is thinking right now because it's that's I think that's a little bit better in, in Yannick's book. Maybe I'll go through there and spend an hour talking about that way of thinking. Um, so. Um, but yeah, I, I, anyway, after the dust settles, one of the, one of the things is we get that the fundamental group of um, the retracted space is the fundamental group of the space, which is, you know, so the fact that we know the fundamental group of the circle is Z means that the fundamental group of the punctured plane is also Z. What's, what's quite beautiful and not entirely easy to prove is a oh, question or oh, okay um, so yes yeah, so, you know for example a contract uh, so by the way a contract what's a contractible space a contractible space is one which is homotopic to a point what's the fundamental group of I mean in other words a contractible space is can be retracted to a point so what's the fundamental group of a point? Zero, right. So what's the fundamental group of a contractible space? Zero, right. Of course, you could also just prove directly that every loop is homotopic to the constant path, right? I mean, it's about as, it wasn't hard to do that before. I think we did that. That's the other way to look at it. Section 8 is maps into the punctured plane, which is like a lot of analysis and complex analysis. I mean, I saw the word Rocher's theorem, which is not a hard theorem, but, you know, it's a little bit away from where we're currently doing. But anyway, if you, if you just look through here, eventually he recovers the index formulas using complex analysis, all right? He discovers a way to understand the homotopy of circles using complex analysis in this section, ultimately leading to a pretty cool theorem, corollary 8.8. I mean, to me, this is very cool. Here's his corollary 8.8. .8. He says that each map, each map F from the circle into the punctured complex plane, all right, is homotopic. Homotopic to what? Homotopic to precisely one of the maps. Z to the M. Well, let's say Z maps to Z to the M. And um, your choice of M is just the index of f. It's, it's, it's the winding number. It's kind of a neat theorem. And then he proves a much neater theorem, which is the fundamental theorem of algebra, right, using this. What's that? Not, no, it's, it's, it looks, uh, looks a little bit like the uh, estimates involved are very much the same estimates that were used in Leville's theorem, right? But the argument's a little bit different. I mean, he, he eventually argues that uh, the restriction of w to the n over g to the unit circle is an exponential, but w to the n is not an exponential since its index is n greater than or equal to 1. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, it's, it's got a larger discussion of what is an exponential quote unquote an exponential as understood in this section. So which is fine. And then section nine, vector fields, well I think I already stated the most interesting theorem in there, 
well, it is an interesting theorem in there. Um, and then there's section 10 on the Jordan curve theorem. Let's see if I have anything to say about that. Not, not particularly. I mean, that's an interesting theorem, but I just don't, I don't have much to say about it at the moment. And then the next, uh, the next chapter here is on higher homotopy groups, all right? And I'm, I think I'm going to try to, I'm th I think I'm going to see if I can't find where, where Yannick talks about it as opposed to, um, to Gamelin. I mean, I, I will admit part of the reason I got this book is I wanted to go through the calculation on uh, page 168 to 169 because he's like integrating a differential form and that gives me joy. And uh, he does, looks at this integral of the differential form in, um, in order to prove the following theorem, which given the flavor of today, I should really write down. So here's the, here's the ultimate, sort of the big, big results in Gamelin's topology book. Theorem 2.1, the n-sphere, Sn, is not contractible. And then theorem 2.2, the n-sphere is not a retract of the n plus 1 ball, unit ball. And then, of course, his theorem 2.3, the famed Brouwer fixed point theorem, if we have f going from bn plus 1 to bn plus 1, a continuous map has fixed point. Certainly, it's possible to teach a course in topology which is much more centered, fixated, if you will, around the results I've said today, pun intended. It's just we've gone a slightly different way, yeah. Um, if you're willing to stomach these, and, and the proof of theorem, the proof of theorem 2.2 involves integration of a differential form over an n-sphere or something like that. It's pretty cool. But maybe I should behave and and, and allocate more of our time to measure theory as opposed to stuff you're going to at most understand 10% of what I'm doing. Well, maybe you'll understand. I don't know. The question is, have you had advanced calculus with me or not, right? It's really two of you have, right? And two of you haven't. You haven't. Uh-oh. It's just Kang then. Um, did you have advanced calculus with me? You had advanced calculus, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yes, I, I, think that's, I think that's wise. I'll try to forge ahead. The, I, I do think it's valuable to try to talk another hour and, and, and some minutes about Yannick because what's left to say is largely categorical. And like big picture, what is the idea of covering spaces? That's, that's where I wanted this book, is because of his big picture discussions. I'm going to try to do my best to guide a discussion through his big picture discussions next time. It may or may not be useful. I don't know. We'll try. Um, my question to you with this, as we're about to done, or we're, or we're pretty much done, does this allow us to prove that So I had, I had claimed that RM and RN are not homeomorphic. Is there anything here that we could kind of bootstrap our way to the proof that RM and RN for different, different M and N are not homeomorphic? They do have the same cardinality, right? But they're not topologically equivalent. I guess what I'm asking is, is there 
anything up here that is well what's the what's the one what's the one ball what's b1 the unit interval what is b1 homeomorphic to I would say it's minus 1 to 1, but, right? Remember your test? So that was one of the ones I wanted you to prove. You used like an inverse tangent or something, whatever, or tangent. So guess what? What's B2 homeomorphic to? Right. And so forth. You, you can extrapolate this. Bn is homo homeomorphic to Rn. If you want a sketch of that, all you do is you take your favorite point in Rn, and to make it go into Bn, just maintain the direction from the origin and shrink it. Just shrink the length down until it fits in there. That's a continuous, in fact, an invertible map. That is, it's a bijection between all of Rn and Bn. So Bn and Rn are homeomorphic by the, just the, well, it's not quite. I'm not, I'm not sure what the map is. You can write it down. You'll be able to write it down. It's not that bad. If you think about it for a little bit, you'll get it. And I keep forgetting upper n, right? So if you believe me for a second, Bn is homeomorphic to Rn, right? So what would it, what would it mean what if we had that Rm and Rn were not, were homeomorphic even though they were M and N were distinct? Right? Yeah, I would say that BM and BN is homeomorphic to one another. And how are the spheres, how are, how are, how are the, the boundaries of the balls related to the spheres? Are they not retracts? No? Oops. So you're saying R2, R2 with, R2 with this is, 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 is essentially this, is the circle. What is the space which is homeomorphic to Rn without a point? Maybe it's S n minus one, yeah. Like I think, I think it's S n minus one. If you take the, if you take all of our three, I'm not sure I want to say that. So I haven't quite seen it yet, but I feel like there's a way we can play with these things to put, to, to prove that the, the spaces of different, like R n and R m with m and n not equal are not homeomorphic. Yeah. Compactify it. So the one point compactification of of R N is is S N. Okay. Oh. Oh, okay, very good. So then if we have Rn is homeomorphic to, the one, one point compactification is a topological process. So that would imply that the one point compactification of Rm was, was homeomorphic to the one point compactification of 
the other one, and um, that would say that that would imply that the spheres of different different spheres were homeomorphic, right? But the thing is, when we calculate these higher homotopies, we're going to see that the higher homotopy groups of different spheres disagree. They're not. Wait a minute, is that right? I feel like I'm saying that wrong as well. Definitely, the homologies of different spheres are different. We've seen that already, right? The homology is like R at the zeroth level, and then it's R again at the kth level, where n equals to k. So we like h1 of s1 was 1, h1 of s2 was 0, but h2 of s2 was, was R again. So like the homology of the n sphere it is different for different n. So if you put that together with the one-point compactification, I think we have a proof that Rm and Rn are not homeomorphic when M and N are different. But I feel like there's maybe another way to like use this stuff. I don't know. But anyway, again, I, you know, this is not my uh, expertise. I just dabble. But I hope I get you guys started thinking. We'll, we'll try to spend some time in Yannick next time and then on to the, uh, to the blue book, right? I got to find my copy. I didn't loan it to you, did I? Okay, I didn't think so. Well, anyway, I think I've, I think I've, I've said things today. <laughs>